Okay, Mr. Adams, it's all yours. Hi, this is Neil Adams, and you're watching Hippies Collectibles. Excelsior Drew Believers, Walter Mesh. Like the hand? <laughs> Thought I'd change it up a little. And if I wear it this way, if I wear it that way, or if I wear it this way, I don't know. It's, like a, it's supposed to be my Tom Petty hat. Where am I? Oh. Um, a few weeks ago, about three weeks ago, there was a small Kabakan here in Cheek Tawaga. And I got to see a YouTuber that I haven't seen in, in a few years, uh, Brian MSK361. And uh, I didn't pick up much, but I did wind up getting spending money that I didn't expect to spend. Well, not, I didn't spend that much, really, to tell you the truth. But uh, there was a couple of local artists there. And uh, and uh, picked up just a few, a couple of books and uh, a couple of pieces of original art and the comic book that these guys worked on. They're all, they're all local. They're, all, they're from uh, Buffalo. And, uh, and they say, oh, great. Shit. Why, why am I getting backwards here? Ah, oh, crap. I'm going to have to post this somewhere else. I'll probably have to integrate it into the, into the video with me and Brian at the, uh, at the Comic-Con. And this is going to be a hodgepodge. And just picked up uh, saw some Alex Ross covers. I mean, these came out a few years ago, but I have other ones, but I, I didn't get, I didn't have these. This is from the uh, Hallows Eve number one. Green Goblin. Gabby. And I want to finish all this up so I can get this table over here cleaned up so I could, I pulled all the original art that I have, uh, that I have, and I pulled it out, so I want to be able to work with it over here. And this is the Red Skull from Captain America, Symbol of Truth, number... 11, Alex Ross again, my favorite Marvel villain of all time. And the last one is Kang, the Conqueror from Avengers Forever, number 15. Ooh, Ooh excuse me. And this one here. <laughs> <coughs> I didn't realize that it had been a reprint at, at that moment. And I saw this on the table and I'm looking at it. What? Ten dollars for this? I mean, I don't know and the guy says, I'll give it to you for five. I said, okay. And then then it, it kicked in. Oh, wait a minute. This is a reprint. But anyway, it's from, uh, what year was this? 1998. This is a, the reprint of uh, Giant Superman Annual Number 1 from 1960. And... Uh, I think it was about four ninety nine was the cover price anyway when it first came out. But this, this is really nice, really nice, really really nice. Fooled me for just a second. And the, the comic, uh, the creators that were there, the the writers and the artists that were there, they they came out and it took them two years to get it all done and get it published. Uh, and they let me have all eight issues for 30 bucks, even though it has a $6 cover price. And it's um, done by the, the, the writer, inker, and letter, and colorist is John Warren. <laughs> and the artist who, who drew it is David Mark McEllicott. McEllicott? McEllicott. And by John Warren is the writer the anchor, the letter, and the colorist. And this features all different universal monsters, the mummy, wolfman, Frankenstein, uh, creature. And uh, I, 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 read, I read the first issue so far. But this is all heavy stock. I mean, heavy, heavy stock. Awesome. I mean, the paper. And the art is, is, is pretty good considering the you know, it's uh, nobody knows who they are. I mean, except probably in the Buffalo area. But uh, I was really impressed 
with the story, and it reminds me of somebody else. I don't know if anybody, if anybody could think of what the art, who the artist might remind you of, because uh, you know, I look at some panels and others, especially this panel right here. This looks like something I've seen somewhere before. You know what? Who does that remind me of? But anyway, it was a, uh, it's a. Uh, Featuring all different monsters. Wolfman, Mummy, Dracula, Frankenstein. Ooh, that's really good. That's really cool. And the Morlocks on the next issue. And uh, the time machine featured in the story is not the same one mentioned in H.G. H. G. Wells, but you have uh, uh, his character name is Jonathan Wells. And like I said, you have all... All the Universal Monsters, and it ran for any. Well, I haven't been able to find it anywhere. I don't know if it was even sold in the local comic book stores, but I was really impressed with how the covers look. And it's called Good Creatures. And if you go to the website, Terrible Lizard Comics, it should be. I might. I think you might be able to find them there. That's if you're interested. And here is the. Issue number two. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Issue number two. Huh. Issue number three, the origin of the Morlocks. It's a geeky, 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 geeky. It's a, a good conversation with them. And uh, uh, the, the creator, the guy who did all the writing and everything, he said he worked on this project for two years before they published it. And it took them two years to get all this together and, and publish it themselves. And they, uh, and from the, just the content of the, uh, the, the, the paper used for the covers and the paper used for the art on the inside, they went all out on this because they really feel that they get something here. And I think they do. I think they do. Issue number four. I know that. Issue number four. The creature, good creatures. Number five. I like this one. Number six, a lot of red. Number seven. And the last issue, number eight. I mean, these are all thick books. I mean, thick. I wouldn't mind having that chair. So good creatures, you know, with, uh, oops. And they had, they, and I said I brought a couple of original art pieces. And this is at terriblelizardcomics.com. I'll show you the first, when I, when I met them and I started talking to them, he, uh, the artist, was working on this, and I asked him if he had a Captain America, and he looked through everything that he had, he didn't have it. So I asked him, so, well, oh, how about that one? You going to sell that one? He said, sure, yeah. And I asked him how much, and he said $20, and I said, what? So I gave him 30 And uh, he, his, he, I asked him to put a little word balloon in there, and he says, my word balloons are really not that good. I said, ah, don't worry about it. Go ahead and do it. And he, at the time, he was working on the Hulk. That's freaking awesome. I love it. Oh, just a pencil sketch. Um, I, if I had the time and everything, I was going to ask uh, John if he, he would do the inking, but he said it would take him about a, uh, you know, a few hours to do it, and there was no time, honestly. So I just settled on this. Really cool. And the one piece that they did have that was drawn and inked 
Oh, because because I uh, because I, I bought the books, they uh, gave me this print signed by both of them of uh, Deadpool. He just uh, got his ass kicked, and this is a print. You know? But they had this one for sale. This one I paid thirty dollars for. This is original art. This is a uh, Iron Man against Submariner. I think it's very cool, and I and I, and I wish these guys luck, and I hope they're uh, endeavor to continue doing what they're doing uh, gets them to be where they want, where they want to be. Very cool. <clears throat> Now, as you can see in the background, back here, see that? That is my new station. Because it's not that it's cluttered here. It's just that a lot of time when I want to, if I want to record music and everything, I have to unplug, you know, plug in. So I have one separate station over there that I'm going to be doing so I can record some music finally, because it gets discouraged and not plug in, setting everything up and doing the editing and shit. So I got a, I got a laptop. Another screen out there so I can see a little better. And I'm going to be recording some music finally. It's been a while since I did it. And uh, I just need to do it. Yeah. And also, when I'm lining up some hearts to include with the, uh, the original art over here, I got a lot of it. I, I didn't think I had that much, but I do. And just going through some shit. Picky's up recently. Uh, Batman 93. From uh, Sanctum Centaurin. Uh, this is to be assigned by James Tiddy in the fourth. Batman 93. If for an artist who's awesome the way he is, his signature sucks. <laughs> what the hell is that? That's terrible signature. But I like it so much, I got Batman 95, signed by James Tenney the fourth. And the fourth is not strong with him on the signature, that's for sure. And a couple of back, some more back issues that I picked up. I just love this cover. And, I, and, and I'm saying to myself, I probably already have it. But because I like it so much, I had to get another one. This is a, a Nick Cardi cover. <sighs> Spectre number eight from 1969. Nick Cardi. As for you, Janet. Very cool. Um, to pay it to my collection, like, this is one that I need. It's a Gordon Scott as Tarzan. Uh, number 87 from 1956. I keep, I keep forgetting how far back Gordon Scott went and, and how long he was uh, Tarzan for in the movies that he made. As far as Tarzan movies go, between Johnny Weissmuller, which was nobody beats, I liked Gordon Scott's movies, second best. They were very good. I enjoyed them a lot. So this is from 1956, Dell Comics. Oh, and a Russ Manning art in here, too, from, uh, uh, I forget what the story is, Spear, bro not Brother Spear. Uh, oh, crap, I forget. So I wouldn't But there's Russ Manning art in this, in this and he, he did quite a few with the Tarzan Dells, too. Extra stories. And to go back and back and back, there's something that I would normally pick up, but the prices were just so good on these. I think we got Cos and Java Kids, yeah. We got June, uh, Ace Comics, number 123 from 1949. Cos and Java Kids, yeah. And Ace Comics number, what freaking number is this? I don't know. Oh, number 58 from 1942. And this is a solid book from 1942. And it also has, a, I forget who else is in this one. Err. I should have written it down, but I didn't. But boy, this is 1942. 
Look, that's friggin' great shape. Unbelievable. Hello, another one from 1942 is Magic Comics with Dagwood and Blonde, number 33. See, the, these these books like this were, wouldn't normally be books I would pick up, but, uh, I mean, I know what they are, I know the titles and stuff like that, but it's not something I would usually go out of my way to get, but the prices on them were just so, are you kidding me? Are you sure you want to sell them at this? Okay, I'll take these. At this... This is 1942, and I'm looking at it, and there's very hardly anywhere on the spine, and nothing along the... It's just a fucking... Oops. It's just a magnificent-looking book. A blazer of a cover. Yeah. And a couple of harvest things. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's from 1963. Frank Springer art. Uh, Frank Springer cover. I think he did the cover, too. This is uh, number four, 1963, of Ghost Stories. Damn. In an early house of mystery, well, not, not early, early, but number from early years, we covered Dick, Dick, Dick Dillon, Dick Dillon cover, and Sheldon Moldoff, and Nick Cardi on the inside. You got a Christmas of 10 Center. So this is number 108 from 1961. This is going to be a long video because I just need to get these books away. And I picked up another copy of this because the price was just unbelievable. <laughs> Strange Adventures, number 217. Now, this is the issue. I mean, it's Neil Adams, of course. But this is the issue that, that started after uh, the end of Dead Man. And the story that was in Dead Man uh, didn't continue until uh, A Brave and the Bold story, which I can't remember which freaking issue it was. But uh, the Dead Man story ended with the issue before this, before Adam Strange took over. Just a great cover. And this is my third copy, I think. And last week, uh, Rod and uh, uh, the week before, they were showing us up Western comics. Everything was Western. We talked about Western. And like, just a couple of days before that, I had picked up these books. And these are the first three appearances in Dell Comics of Cheyenne. Now, this is issues one, two, and three, but it didn't it didn't become, uh, the number run didn't become like, two, two. number four was the first issue that had actually number four on it. But this is uh, issue number 734, which is actually the first appearance of Cheyenne Bodie. You know, the man slow to anger, quick to draw. Four color, 10 center, Cheyenne. That was one of my favorite westerns when I was a kid. Along a Maverick, Wagon Train, and his issue number two, which is actually issue 772 from 1957. Oh, come on. And issue number three, which was issue 803 from 1957. Clint Walker. One of his first screen appearances... You won't believe it. Was in Cecil B. the no, was it Cecil? Uh, Ten Commandments. You know Charlton Heston Moses. He played one of the guards. No, no speaking part, but he just stood there, you know, holding the spear, from the, looking like the beast that he was. And long, more, more, more Western stuff. I love the Dell Lone Ranger. I love the ones that had the painted covers that had the the uh, the Clayton Moore version version that we know of, but I love the the covers that they had before them. This is an early one from 1949, number 14. That's just a nice classic Golden Age cover, just beautiful. And two books that I did go out of my, well, I didn't really go out of my way to look for, but I was looking for one thing, and I found these two from the same seller for a price that was just, I mean, the combined, I'm not, I won't tell you how much I paid, but the combined, wow, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And this first one here, they're both coverless, and this is from 1946, number 54, 
with art by Alex Schauberg, Vince Aldessia, Carmen Infantino, Lou Page, and the writers were Stan Lee, Bill Finger, and Lou Page. And this is Captain America number 54 from 1956. I mean, no cover, but this. Uh, look at that. Look along the spine. That's just freaking beautiful. And I guess he just wanted to get rid of books. He just, I don't know. Uh, but the price was just, man, you got to be kidding. And a key book, a key book for me, which it, this is. This is really isn't the first time that he drew Captain America, but this is the first issue that he drew in Captain America. He had drawn, he had drawn, he drew Captain America, in, I think prior prior to this in uh, Young Allies, I believe. But this is John Romita's first Captain America story in Captain America, number seventy six, nineteen fifty four, and uh, it's John Romita Senior. And the Human Torch story is by Ruth, Ruth? <laughs> Russ Heath. So here is Captain America. <coughs> Excuse me, number 76. A book, well, even though it's coverless, I don't care. It's complete, and it's a really nice shape. And it's John Romita's first Captain America story in Captain America. I am so happy to have this. And maybe one day I'll find the cover and probably have to pay four times more than I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> hey, quickie, quickie, quickie. Uh, had these for a few months. Haven't put them away yet. Why? Because I'm a freaking dummy. I'm just, I'm just getting slow. I'm getting old. And it's the Creep Show series. I mean, I had to get it. This is the Chris Burnham cover A, but it's the, uh, uh, the sketch cover version. Creep show. And this is the uh, number one. Uh, Chris Brown cover, cover A. Creep show number one. Creep show number one. A third cover. Uh, Declan Shelby, cover B. <laughs> That's ass kicking. Another number one. This is a cover C by Vance Kelly. And I got these all on pre-order. So I paid cover price for all of them. And I was very lucky to get them. And the one, I think this is the comic book. Uh, this is a variant from SSCO, uh, Sanctum, Sanctum Sanctorum. It's a Robert Hack cover. Could only get this from uh, Sanctum Sanct Sanctorum. Very cool. So, another. Uh, number two, Chris Burnham. Bzzz. Shocking. This was, oh boy. Yeah. So, if I woke up and this face was staring at me, it would take a week to clean out my shorts. Number three, Francisco Francavilla. Haircut, anybody? How about a nice trim? <laughs> number, number three, this reminds me of a, of a uh, an EC cover. Uh, the diver coming down with the giant clam, but this is the diver coming down, finding a surprise in the treasure chest. And this one is by Chris Brown. He did a lot of these covers. Ugh. Another number three. This is this is the retailer incentive variant by Mr. Frank Ovella. And the cover is by uh, Vance Kelly. The incentive. And then the number four again. Adriano Lucas, a Chris Burnham cover. You see, if this was an EC cover back in the back in the fifties, you would get that cover like that, but there would be no blood on the hatchet. It would just be a hatchet sticking in a piece of wood. 
And to end that, creep show number five. Yes. Adrian Lucas and Chris Burnham cover. And then it's going to be it for this one. Like I said, I should have did these a while ago, but I'm, I'm just getting so backed up trying to do 10 freaking things at the same time and, and, and uh, stubbing my toes and banging my fingers and just trying to get things organized, which is a, an ongoing project that just doesn't seem to have an end. I don't get it. So that's it for this one. Now I can put these away. And I still got... Um, no, I can't. Uh, shit. I got the entire Sync series. Sync. Holy crap. Get it. Boom Comics. Is this Boom Comics? No, uh, Comics Tribes. Comics Tribe. This is on a recommendation of, uh, of uh, uh, Dope Comics. And I got the... Let's see how many issues did it go? It went 10 issues. 10. 10. Nine, eight, 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 seven, six, sink. I'm telling you, wow. Another six. I hope this is, yeah, number five. <laughs> Professor X, what are you doing on this cover? Number four. Number three. I think this is a variant because I couldn't find the other ones that were like this. And sync them with what? But this one, they sent me a whole bunch of stuff to go along with it, cards and shit. Well, no shit, but uh, I don't know if it was part of when, when, the first, when the book was first released, but I had this card. Came with this. A coaster. Is that, I don't know what the hell that is. It came with that. And it came with another card. So, if you like horror, sink. Sink. All right. Sorry to take up so much of your time. And I don't expect anybody to watch the whole thing all the way through, but. I needed to do this so I could get everything away. So I can look like I know what I'm doing as far as organizing, which is uh, nothing that I'm good at. Anyway, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the new subs, too. That's really cool. So until next time, which will be original art. All my original clues, some stuff that I did. Remember, collect what you like and love what you collect.